So today we have a very special episode for you guys. We have a true comeback story. We have the story of somebody who not only was chasing his dreams before his paralysis, but became paralyzed and still continued to chase his dreams. As of today, he has been a part of over 200 flips. He currently flips houses and he also has a backyard fight league where they put the guns down pick them hands up maybe one day i'll have the opportunity to go there and fight in the league i don't know maybe let me know in the comment section below should i let me know so today we hear the story of jonathan i hope you guys enjoy peace so tell us a little bit about you you know like your age um your data paralysis just anything interesting that you think that the people oh yeah for, so all right so for the audience out there and first and foremost thank you kevin for having me on your on your platform brother i appreciate it all right, I, thank you thank you you do, you know, for the community and also just for just the general public. I think a lot of people are misinformed and it's good to educate and just shine light on different people's story and, and just, you know, living in a wheelchair. So uh, my name is Jonathan Dela Cruz. I was born in Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm 34 years old. I was born to immigrant parents. My father came here when he was 15 years old from Dominican Republic. And my mother came here when she was like eight years old from El Salvador. Okay. So I mixed Latino background. Um, age 11, I moved to Florida. I lived in Florida when my parents divorced. I moved to uh, Florida with my mother. I have a younger sibling named Rigo. Um, shout out to Rigo, my brother. Um, he's 30 years old. So, I mean, 31 years old. Okay. So I'm, I'm years older than him. Uh, he stayed here in Maryland in the DC area. So I'm right. I, I live in Washington, DC in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, and yeah, um, I, oh yeah, my injury. So yeah, of course, that's why we're here, right? So yeah. they, no, 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 no. Uh, you good? You good? You good? You good? Nah, nah, uh, nah. Uh, we ain't got to go into it uh, yeah, well, just yet. Course, yeah, but just, just a little. That's that's mm. it, options. Dominican Salvadorian dude. Okay. You know, um, born in Silver Spring, Maryland, raised in Miami. I, I went to middle school and high school in Miami, so that's like my second home for real. And then I moved back to Maryland in 2005 after I graduated high school. So, okay. um, you know, a few things about me. I grew up in a boxing family. My father was a professional oh. boxer. Okay. So, um, boxing's dear to my heart, too. That's like my first same. love. Same, same, same. I love boxing. Yeah, yeah. That's my thing, man. So, um, uh, grew up boxing. I, I, I also trained uh, once I moved to Miami. That was like my outlet. That's mm -hmm. something off the streets, uh, something I found that kept me busy after school um so yeah i started boxing when i when i moved to miami like around 12 years old started going to the gym um and that's something that's always connected me to my father so uh him and i we still have a great relationship i used to come and visit maryland on the summer and train here at the sugar ray leonard boxing gym so yeah boxing's dear to my heart oh, okay, so, so so crazy story so i i um i got shot right uh on a monday right I, okay we could kind of get into that and it kind of ties into my boxing thing. Mm -hmm. I started, I stopped boxing. So I was boxing from age 12, well, my whole life. Cause my dad, mm -hmm. one, two, one, two, three, yeah. you know, yo, my son got a good left, good, good left hook, you know, as a little kid and me and my brother mm -hmm. putting on the gloves and putting on the gloves outside mm -hmm. with the around the neighborhood. So, um, and then, but I started training in the gym under coach uh, when I was 12. So from 12 to like 17, I was always in the gym. Constantly, always in the gym, mm -hmm. off the streets. Then I moved back to uh, Maryland when I was 18. I took like a two-year break. Oh, no, like almost a three-year break. Well, I, I did train a little bit, but like a two-year break from boxing. Yeah. And I started training again in, um, in uh, my fall. Oh, I, no, you good, you good, you good. I started training again in 2009. Uh, so okay. in 2009 is when I got shot in mm. February. And I used to go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I didn't go to the box gym uh, to study for my real estate exam. Mm, okay, okay. You know what? Okay, so all right, before we get into that story, you know, tell us how that day was going. How was everything going for you? You know, like, what was that day like for you? Was you having I, a good day, bad day? I mean, it was a great day because I have to think that the, the, the um, just that time period, right? I'm 20 years mm -hmm. old. I'm 21. I was 21 when I got shot. I was just... Mm -hmm. 21 December, I got shot in February. So only two months okay. into being 21. But I was in the mind state of, you know, being super hyper focused on my goals. And yeah. I had stumbled across the concept of real estate wholesaling, mm -hmm. flipping houses. Okay. I, you know what? Let me go ahead and get my real estate license. 
and uh, I, I enrolled to, to in the course to get my real estate license. Okay. And at the same time, I was holding a nine to five, working at a leasing office, leasing apartments. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of that, I was I was kind of like in the process of trying to move out with the management company I worked with. Yeah, nine to five, working there, and then uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday after work, I would go to the boxing gym. Tuesday and Thursday, I was taking the class to get my real estate license in the evening after mm -hmm. work. So I finished the course, um, and um, now it was it came time to study for my real estate exam. So this the day I got shot was a Monday. Okay. Mondays is my gym days. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have requested the day off because um, I had also wasn't it was like around the time tax season, so I had some money to buy. Okay. A car, so I'm like, let me go ahead, go to the dealership that morning. Mm -hmm. I the broker because after you get your real estate license course out the way, um, mm -hmm. they need to, um, you know, after you pass the the course and the license, I mean the test, you then need to um, affiliate with a brokerage. So, so it was a this was a Monday, so it was a Monday mm -hmm. after the court after you pass your real estate course, you then and and you take the test, you need to affiliate with a broker. So mm -hmm. that um, morning, I interview with a broker. The broker so happened to be also a real estate investor. He aligned with my goals, which was to be a, an investor, and he was gonna bring me on swing and all that. So I'm like, bet this is perfect. Um, I go home excited. I'm riding with my boy that uh, he was running a room in the in the basement, my bedroom in the house. I was living mm -hmm. at my dad's house. Okay. The bedroom in the basement was my, um, rented out to my boy, and I, I was mm -hmm. down there. So he was riding with me to back to the house. I get home that evening. So let me just give you a little background on my on my just household in general. Okay, I, okay. To understand the story, right? Mm -hmm. so my father, he's a he's a loving man. Loving mm -hmm. man. He's you know, he's a he's a dad. Our house was like, I don't want to say a refuge, but it was like open door. You know what I'm saying? My dad showed love to everybody. He was like everybody, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I can so, relate. Trust me, my dad was the same way. I yeah, you feel me? So, yep, so, he still is. Sometimes, you know, you may have some guys that are troubled coming mm -hmm. through the doors. You know what I'm saying? Going through yeah. some troubled times and they mm -hmm. not the best characters. You feel me? Yeah. So we had a few of those people come through my house. So I, at this age, I'm like, yo, I need to get, I need to get out of my house. Mm -hmm. And also give you a little, another little brief background. So when I moved back from Miami in 2005. Mm -hmm. Um, my brother was always living in Maryland. Mm -hmm. However, when I moved back in 05, we switched. He moved to Miami. So from 05 to 08, um, I didn't, uh, he wasn't there. It was just me. You know what I'm saying? So my kind of like, my kind of vibe was always like dancing. I used to go out dancing on the weekend, bachata, salsa, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, you feel me? That's, mm -hmm. I also hold dear to my heart is dancing. Okay. That's why I was nice with the footwork and boxing. You feel me? Okay. I put it all okay. together. So um, anyway. The Machico style. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's why I relate to him in the dancing and all that. So mm -hmm. um, so that was my vibe. I used to dance. I used to drink. And I girls. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Girls. You feel me? That was. Uh, I feel you. I feel you. Into the streets is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. I wasn't really in the streets. You know? Um, yeah. So my brother moves back in 08. Okay, so in 08, now, and, and then, you know, at that time, my father, unfortunately, at that time, was going through some substance situation, too. So okay. my whole household was just kind of mm -hmm. a little wild, wicked. Okay. You, me, I'm like, real estate, I need to get out. You know, I need to get out mm -hmm. of here and move. Yeah. Um, so in, in, in 08, my brother graduated. So now there's like, you know, he's he's younger than me. So at that mm -hmm. time, he's like bringing the younger 18-year-olds, and they're a little wild. You know, the younger mm -hmm. kids, not you know, always are the wild ones, knuckleheads and yeah. stuff. Um, you know, so now I'm seeing guns around. Like, I, I, I wasn't around all that, like, though, during the time, just me, because that wasn't my vibe. So, you know, I had some people coming around. So my brother, I would say that my brother, he, he's always had a hustler mentality, right? He's always mm -hmm. had to defend himself and get his money. My, my father's always been a worker, so I guess growing up with my father's instilled that um, hustler in him. Um mm -hmm. So this particular day, now fast forward, now I'll give you those two two little pieces of information. Fast forward to this day, mm -hmm. Monday, February 23rd, 2009, I get home after an exciting day, after an interview with a broker, 
mm-hmm. after like deciding to go home. I had it, I had scheduled my PSI exam, which is the exam to get licensed for real estate. I scheduled it for Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, I get home, I go home and study. That's my focus. Like I'm gonna go home and study. My bad, man. And excuse me if I'm sweating a little bit. So, no, I, no, you good, my man. You good, you that, good. Oh, the injury. Sometimes I'm sweating, yeah. sometimes I'm not. It's freaking mm-hmm. weird. So anyway, um, so yeah, so I get home and when I open the door, there's a dude that opens the door that used to live in my house, 2008 in the summer of 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, over one of these cats, he was an older Dominican dude. That mm-hmm. one of my dad's friends that he just let stay for like a month or two, trying to help him yeah. get on whatever. Yeah, it was kind of strange to me. So I was already getting weird vibes at the door when he opened mm-hmm. the door. I'm like, "What's going on here? Why is he here?" Yeah. So apparently he had came down from New York. He moved had moved to New York. I had not seen him in all this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, came down from New York, and and he came to my house and he was looking for a plug to purchase yeah. a thousand ecstasy pills. Mm-hmm. All right. And why would he come to my house? I have no idea. I guess because, you know, you know what I'm saying? My brother was a hustler, the people around that he was seeing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And at that time, my brother had let um, one of his middle school friends stay at my house, too. Mm-hmm. At the time of, of the, you know, for like the past month or two months prior to the injury, like that whole time, my brother had his middle school friend staying upstairs in his room like he was just staying in the crib yeah that was strange it was suspect to me too because he was like could never go outside he only couldn't be in certain areas like they were looking mm-hmm. for so i'm mind, i'm minding my business bro i'm into yeah. i'm into you feel me you know what it is i got my goals and my plans mm-hmm. so i get home this day the dominican dude let's call him dominican dude from new york mm-hmm. um uh, he comes, he opens the door, he asks me about these pills. I'm like, nah, I don't. And I have, I remember having a conversation with him upstairs because my, the way my dad's house was set up, you got a, a bedroom upstairs and then my room is in the basement. So I was on the upper bedroom, which was my brother's room at the time. And, um, and yeah, and I was, uh, and he, he asked me like, yeah, if you give me some more money. And remember I have some money from the tax season. I'm always, I'm looking mm-hmm. for And the thought of me, getting involved in that didn't even cross my mind. You know, yeah. like, obviously then he evolved for me, I'll double your money and blah, blah. I'm like, nah. Mm-hmm. And my mindset was like, I'm gonna go go downstairs to the basement and I'm gonna do my thing and I'm gonna study. Yeah. So I, I let him be, boom. Um, as later in the day, I remember going back upstairs to my brother's room and then my brother was there and he was like making phone calls. Mm-hmm. And, he, and then I'm like, he's trying to make calls, trying to plug him up with the pills. Yeah. Do five thousand pills, and now my my brother's mm-hmm. been trying to middleman the deal, you know, and like oh, okay. pills, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me mm-hmm. find, let me find that for you, and maybe I guess he was thinking of making some money in between, right? Mm-hmm. So, so he's calling people around, and then you know, I remember specifically saying like, bro, don't even get involved in that, man. Just mm-hmm. you know, chill. Like, boom. So I went my way. I went downstairs to the to my basement, right? Yeah. basement so um i don't know my brother ends up having a, like a haircut appointment so he leaves the house but okay. you know before he leaves i hear that he made the deal happen and who he had in the calling was his middle school friend that was already living in the crib that was staying at the house oh okay right. so he ended up calling him he's like oh yeah i could get that for you so mm-hmm. the middle school friend said he could get it so now He's like, oh, it's about to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. I found it. I'm like, man, what the heck? Whatever. Go to my room. So now I'm in my bedroom. It's like 8.30 at night. Um, and it's in the bed, and, and, and in the house is my brother's gone. He's getting a haircut. Mm-hmm. Um, it's me in, in my bedroom. So the way the so the way the, the house was set up, you come down the stairs, and you come down the stairs, and then my bedroom door is right to the left. You know Okay. Stairway, bedroom door right to the left. Like, okay. Right. My bedroom door is open. I'm sitting in, in my desk. As soon as you come in my my bedroom, um, there's a desk. So you come in the doorway. There's a desk right in front of the doorway. Okay. I'm sitting at my desk with my laptop open mm-hmm. and with my book open. I'm 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 studying for my real estate test. Yeah. Um, in the basement is 
my boy, remember the, my boy that was I was with the whole day that was riding me around, mm-hmm. right in the room in the basement. So he was in the basement. Okay. Laundry room. So you come down the stairs, you go to the left of my room, mm-hmm. you go to the right around, like or you have to turn around, and then there's a laundry room, and then there's an exit to leave out the house. So he's in the laundry room with the Dominican dude that wants to buy the pills. Okay. They're just chilling back there. I'm in my room chilling. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, the the middle school friend, right? My brother's middle school friend. Yeah. He gets home. He comes in through the basement, and then I see him. I hear him and see him coming through the basement. And he goes upstairs. He doesn't come in my room. He goes upstairs. Okay. Then he comes back downstairs, and then he comes in my room and he sits with me. So I was at my um, I was at my computer desk. Uh, sitting, he sits, he's sitting like to my left mm-hmm. and I ask him, I'm like, yeah, you know about these pills? They were like some star E pills. That's what they were mm-hmm. looking for. Ecstasy pills or some, some star pills or something. Okay. I never done that shit before. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I smoke weed, bro. <laughs> Same. Same. It, nothing else. Um, so, so I asked him about it and he says, yeah, like he looks strange to me. I'm already feeling the, the day is already mm-hmm. weird. It's weird as heck. As soon as that dimension mm-hmm. opened my door, like one thing, if you have intuition, if you even get that gut, that gut feeling, like that mm-hmm. shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you ever have felt those things and mm-hmm. real, bro. You know, just on certain things, but lot- I would, you know, I wouldn't say like about my incident, but it, but just on certain things, yeah. But what's crazy is, you know, I I try to ask everybody. You know, how was your day going? Was you having a good day, a bad day? Did you feel like any intuition that anything was, you know, yeah. going to go wrong? So it's yeah. crazy. Oh, that's that one of your interviews. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy that you kind of say that because now we're getting some insight on somebody who, you know, I finally talked to who had some type of intuition that, you know, maybe this day and might not end too well. Open that door and he was there and I felt like, yeah, I haven't seen him in all these months because. Mm-hmm. But the, you know, he was. I know the dude was into like some illegal stuff back then. So when he was at my house, like, what is this dude doing here? Yeah, it was yeah. Weird. you know, it was just off. And then let me tell you. So now I'm in my room. I'm sitting in my room now. Okay. The dude, the middle school, you know, friend is sitting next mm-hmm. to me, and I'm asking about these pills. And then he don't even want to look at my face, bro. Mm, okay. Then, now that weird feeling, that strange. Yep. Feeling, again, I'm like, bro, he's acting weird. Mm-hmm. He don't even look at me. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, my man's outside." Mm. And this is your brother's friend, correct? Yeah, from middle. So, so the moment that he comes into the room is that weird? Like, just off rip? Like, is it just like, hold up? Like, you don't I, ever like normally come in my house, room, or no, yeah. not, no, because he's always like through the, in and out the house. I knew he was okay. staying. But it wasn't weird, but it was weird when he sat with me and he didn't want to look at my face, and he was just. He just looks strange. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. He knew something was about to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he just wasn't normal. Okay. And, and I got my book open, bro. I got I got my laptop open because I used to always, um, you know, I, I used to binge watch webinars. You okay. know what I'm saying? I'm trying to learn how to flip houses. You know, I'm, I'm 20 mm-hmm. year, 21 years old trying to, like, learn how to be a real estate millionaire. I literally bought yeah. one of the like, late night infomercial books. Uh uh-huh. learn how to be a real estate millionaire, you know, <laughs> with no okay. cash. Like I was into that, bro. You yeah. know, yeah. Nah, I feel, you, I feel, you, I feel. You. I'm young, you know. Yeah. I had read this book um Think and Grow Rich. I recommend okay. it. Their mind straight, cause okay. it, it all starts in the mind, bro. Get that book, Think and Grow. It does. Rich. It does. It does. It does. That's what planted the seed in my mind. You feel me? So, um, so yeah, bro. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm there with my book open. I got my laptop mm-hmm. open. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then um he says my man's outside after asking about the pills. You know, and then I see you doing your pressure release. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um so then so then um bro, a minute later I feel someone else come in my room. Mm. Yeah, and I'm in I'm in those desk chairs. I'm on a stool. So okay. you know stool swivel around. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, I feel someone else come in my room and I swivel in my stool and I turn around and I see him coming through my door. Remember the door is right in front of my desk. Mm-hmm. So I literally just had to like 
you know, whoop, turn around, and boom, mm. gun in my, but gun in my face, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, where that? Cause I was like in shock. I'm in my PJs. I'm in my bedroom. This is the last thing I expect. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm not freaking home invasion. So, so gun in my face. Where that? Cause he he steps in my room. He steps now. He he doesn't stay in the doorway. He steps mm -hmm. in my room to the right. Mm -hmm. So now I have the doorway. The doorway is like this way. My vision is this way, right? Okay. Can you hear me? Are you good? We good? Yeah. You know, no. You yeah. Know you're good, so you're good. so I'm looking. So I'm looking at him this way. And um, I'm just staring down a barrel of a gun, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I just mm -hmm. he just kept asking me like, where that? Cause where that? That's all I remember hearing him even asking. Now mm -hmm. remember, I'm looking this way. So at that point. The neighbor, the 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 uh, middle school friend. Remember, he's in the room with me too. Mm -hmm. He says, "My his man's outside. He's still in the room with me." So he's now he's standing to my right, but I don't even look at him, bro. I'm not even paying attention yeah. to him because mm, he got his gun on you. Scott is straight. I'm looking down straight down the barrel, bro. And the mm -hmm. dude's not he's bare face, no mask on. Oh damn! Ain't no mask on, bare face. Woo! So I read, you know, he's young skinny dude. Yeah. Hey. Do you know him? Nah, nah, I didn't know him. I didn't know the shooter. I didn't know the shooter. You know, not at all. Um, you know what I'm saying? Came in barefoot. Where that cuz, where that. Mm -hmm. person I knew in that room was my, my brother's friend. Middle, okay. You know what I'm saying? Middle school friend. And, um, and he may have said it like two times, bro. It happened so quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it happened so freaking fast. And I think at that moment, all I thought was about was survival. Mm -hmm. Literally staring down the barrel of a gun. Like, I ain't never been in that situation before. And and especially to be caught off so off guard like that and in the sanctuary of my home, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. so, um, so I try to turn. So I try to turn. So, you know, my only thought was to run. You know, that was the only yeah. thing I thought of. Like, let me try to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, I'm I'm looking this way, and the door, the door is that way. I just boom, I took like two steps, and then boom, he popped off, and yeah. the bullet, yeah, and the bullet hit me. Um, it went this way. So imagine getting shot this yeah. way. I'm trying to exit that way. You feel me? Mm -hmm. To the side. So it, it went through my my scapula, went through my shoulder. Yeah, and it um it hit me. I got hit with a hollow point mm. and I dropped, I dropped in my doorway. Yeah. So imagine me like laying this way, I dropped this mm -hmm. way, um, right in the hallway, facing the stairs. Okay. Like the stairs to go back upstairs. And my brother's friend, he, he jumped over me and just left out the back door the same way he came in. Yeah. And the shooter, the shooter, bro, it's crazy. So the shooter put the gun in my head and tried to kill me. He gave, didn't do like a headshot. Mm. And the gun jam. The fucking gun, God. yeah. The gun jam, bro. That's crazy. So yeah, and then I saw him just run up the stairs and because he, he came, you know, he came through upstairs. So I guess he just left the same way he came in, right? He don't know the house. Mm -hmm. So he left upstairs. And as he was opening the door, my grandma was opening the door too. Mm -hmm. And thank God he didn't do shit to my grandma. But he ran past my grandmother and left out the house. And then I was in the hallway just laying there like fucking basically in shock, just watching my grandma run. Like she kept running like... Back and forth, I could see her run at the top of the stairs, like freaking out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, and then remember, remember my brothers. I mean, remember my boy that rented the basement room. Yeah, um, he was in the. They were in the room. They were in the house. They were in the basement. But when they heard the shot, they ran out. Mm -hmm. They ran out the back door. So when the house was cleared and the and the people's left, he they like 
my boy that rented the room in the basement, I saw him come down the stairs and he, he was the one that called the ambulance. Okay. Yeah. And I was just like, I was just laying there, bro. I never lost consciousness, you know, mm-hmm. I was like just laying there. Okay. So, so was your brother's friend that was in the room with you? Was he a part of it? Yeah. He set it up. He said his man was outside. He ain't try to. He ain't try to. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then the whole time I was in the hospital, he never, he never came through. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. That's okay, been, so once he ran out, y'all just never saw him again after that. Nah. Until he got caught by the police, but then he okay. used he used the second shot as his defense. He's saying that they were shooting at him because the freak. Yeah, exactly. Saying because it was all, it's all mm-hmm. they, he say. It's no hard evidence. Yeah. I, I'm telling the detectives, I'm like, yeah, there was a second shot. Oh, did you see the second? I'm like, no, but I knew he was freaking over me, and I felt the, like there was a second shot. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I guess they yeah. caught He said, oh, you know, the dude tried to shoot me, too, and try to rob me, me too, and mm-hmm. so. Okay, so so that moment that you get shot, do you, you say you land in the middle of the hallway kind of facing the stairway. Yeah, this way. At, at that moment, at that moment, can you feel your legs? Nah, bro. I already knew. The thought of me being paralyzed already went through my mind as I was laying Damn. there. I, and I was just yelling out, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Like, I was just trying mm-hmm. to focus on my breathing. Like, I remember specifically trying to focus on my breathing. Like, yeah, going to kind of some sort of panic, bro. But, like, like Same. Thoughts, Same. you know what I'm saying? Just to imagine, bro. I was planning my whole week, like literally. I was on like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. That's boom. I'm about to move, like mm-hmm. boom, boxing again. Like I'm young, yeah. you know, trying to get it and do my thing right and do the right. Thing. I wasn't in those. Mm-hmm. So life is all about choices, man. You know what I'm saying? Right, my man. You right. You right. It was like a devil. It was like that was the devil that opened the door that day. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was my intuition. That's like a demon right there. You feel me? Just yeah. pop. Thing. Exactly. Young kids a choice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that was. That's like that's like what that symbolized or whatever. You know, like life is about the choices you make, man. So exactly for people listening to this, you know, you know, for whoever, you know, that's why right now I'm real active right now. Mm-hmm. Um and we could talk about that. I'm real mm-hmm. active right now and raising awareness on, on gun violence. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um through boxing. So we have like mm-hmm. a boxing initiative. It's called the Thumper. Okay. And you know, so say it again, say the name again, say the name again. The Thump Yard. Okay. Yeah, the Thump Yard. T H E T H U M P Yard. We got like okay. fights on YouTube. It's like a okay. You know, about to start season two right now. We got, oh sweat. It's a lot, bro. It's so much like mm-hmm. like bro. I just had my 13 year anniversary last month. You know what okay. I'm saying? You know, I'm and by the way, I'm a T two injury. Okay. T two T three, so I'm like high nipple line down. Mm-hmm. Literally, like I'm working with here up, you yeah. know. And and thank God I'm still able to be independent. Yeah. Um, you know, um, it's a lot, bro. It's been it's been such a freaking journey, mm-hmm. but it's been a blessing at the same time. You know, it's just so yeah. weird. It when is you, weird. It's weird. It's like got, it's, it's a love hate relationship. It is, bro. It is, bro. It is, yeah. bro. But but it's like I put myself to do these things because it's like I said this and I thought of this the other day. It's like I don't wanna, I don't want to I don't want all my suffering right. Like I don't want all my suffering and everything I'm going through on a daily. The pain, the this and that, the mm-hmm. UTI, the freaking this, but like there's a lot to this. Other, it's not just yeah. I can walk. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot deeper than that. But I don't want it to be in vain. So it's like that mm-hmm. pushes me to just to get it by any means right now, you know? Yeah. And um, I've been able to father a son, bro. You know what I'm saying? I have Congratulations. A son, I have a two-year-old son, bro. That's been my biggest blessing. And that's okay. something I thought that would never have happened mm-hmm. on my own home. I still do real estate. You feel me? Okay. Been, okay. Oh, getting shot. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. <laughs> Okay, it's a lot, okay. Bro. I'm just yeah. Oh no, no, no. Look, my man. Look, I, look. Trust me. I understand. I understand. Look, look. You taking? You know, I. Let me see, man. It's just it's like look like what I said. 
Look what you're doing. You're you're doing yeah. an amazing thing. Yeah. You know, Thank you. But Thank you. imagine it wouldn't happen without just just unfortunate. Exactly. Right. Like my doors and opportunities wouldn't. A lot of them wouldn't have been open without me being where I'm at. Yeah. You know, exactly. Carry on. <laughs> exactly. You know what's so crazy is I know for a fact I wouldn't be talking to you right now if it wasn't because of my wheelchair. No, that's and a fact. It, and it's like it's it. Like I said earlier, it's a love hate relationship because, you know, I feel like that the wheelchair has introduced me to some to like just some amazing people out there. And I know if I if I wasn't in a wheelchair, I would have never met these people. Exactly. So, you know, it's it's really truly a blessing. You know, I agree. And I feel like that this can. I feel like that the community alone is beautiful. Like it's 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 crazy. You know, like everybody like everybody's everybody's cool, man. And, and you know, like you just see a, a, a group of individuals that. They're not letting the wheelchair define them. You know, like everybody's pushing through. I'm pushing through. You pushing through. Yeah. You know, shout out to the thump yard. You feel me? Thank uh, you. you know what I mean? And it's just, you know, it's really, it, it's really truly amazing to see. Cause, you know, I feel like sometimes, sometimes I know it can feel like that we're like the only person in a wheelchair in the world. Like, like for me, it just, I don't know. Like, I don't know, man. Like, we all have our good days, we all have our bad days. You know, mm-hmm. but you know, like I tell people, I just try to, I just try to really just stay focused and you know, just stay busy. You know, that's you important, know, bro. Exactly. Like a, like a, a, um, a sitting mind, like an idle mind. It's not good, bro. You no, know, what I'm, it's not. It's not. It's, it's not. not you know what I'm saying? We gotta keep you know, have our heart and our brain. Exactly. And, you know what I'm saying? We could still make things mm-hmm. happen. Exactly. You shouldn't let anything like get in our way. Mm-hmm. Um, my big thing was, so I was in the ICU for, um, you know, so back to my story, man. I, so I'm laying there and the paramedics come. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm conscious through the whole thing, bro. Mm. Are you in any pain at this moment? Bro, I feel like it was a big Charlie horse. If I could describe being shot, like a big, huge yeah. Charlie. And then the first thought was like, I was just literally in shock. Like, damn, like, how the heck I get shot? Like, I was literally mm-hmm. trying to do everything right. Like, it was literally yeah. going through my mind and, you know that whole thing about oh, your whole life flashing. It's like my whole week mm-hmm. was just flashing through. Like I thought yeah. it was gonna be right there, bro. And um, mm-hmm. and 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 man, you know. And then waking up in the ICU with freaking tubes. I had a ventilator in my throat down my yeah. throat. I had the neck brace on. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it just everything felt like a freaking nightmare, bro. Mm-hmm. How long yeah. did it take you to? To actually wake up, you know, from the time, because I know you said that you was up the whole time. Was you up the whole time, all the way going up to the hospital? Uh, in the in the ambulance, I was fading in and out. I remember talking okay. to the detective; he was asking me questions. I was fading in and out. I was okay. like fading, blacking out, like coming back and going out. Like I thought I was dying, bro. Mm-hmm. I thought, literally, I thought I was dying. You I know what, man? Like t- to be That's honest, like, you, you probably were. I, yeah, you probably were. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so from the time you're in the ambulance and you pass out for that last time, how long is it until you wake up? I, you know, I, I see you, bro. I, I, you know, I was, I was listening to someone's story about being in a coma. Was it you? Were you in a coma? Yeah. They, I, they, uh, they induced yeah. my coma for three weeks because they said that the pain was just too severe. I don't know, bro. I'm gonna ask that. Know. Don't know, but I it wasn't in a coma. I know I wasn't in a coma. Okay. Coma was never mentioned throughout my thing. Mm-hmm. So I I just remember waking up in ICU and having the ventilator in my mouth and remember people around. Mm-hmm. And then Who's there when you wake up? Um I mean, yo, let me tell you something, bro. Remember, I moved back here from Miami. I left my mother in Miami. Okay. I got shot, bro. The next day she was here. You know what I'm saying? She left her whole life. You know, shout out to my mother. Yeah. Uh, you know. Shout out to moms. Bro, she's been a great support. You know, so mm-hmm. so important. She's been the number one supporter, bro. And, yeah. You know. You know, it's been it's it's tough, bro. I don't I don't I don't know how I could have done it because my dad my dad is a strong man, but he's a weak man. He's also mm-hmm. sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He can't he can't see me in this state. He goes he goes wild like he want to mm-hmm. go. For a freaking avenge and this, yeah. my, my sons, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the wild man, I love him, bro. 
you know, I don't know, my mother's been strong and she's been able to, you know, and also I, I say that she's been able to keep pushing me to pursue my thing and she doesn't, she never like, um, she never, uh, how can I say it? So my mother's never thought less of me or mm-hmm. never, uh, what's the freaking word I'm thinking of right now? I'm just, I don't know, there's all these emotions right now kind of like getting all. No, you good, you good. So yeah, no, nah, no, nah, but um, yeah, she's never like expected. My mother's never expected less of me because I'm in a world. You feel me? Okay. So you know, you know, I'm in the ICU for one month. I they take they end up having to take the tube out my mouth. Okay. And um, I ended up having to get a trach. Yup, me too. I got the same. Yeah. Dude, let me cut. You want to hear a story about this? I got a story for that too. What's up? What's up? Man, so. You know when they, you know they, 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 they put you in anesthesia, right? They mm-hmm. gave you to sleep, right? To do this, I wasn't, I wasn't up. Remember, I told you I was in, oh, yeah. I was in a induced coma for, for three it, weeks. Yeah. So me, I was, I was conscious. I was always hitting that morph, that morphine button. Mm-hmm. I that, that had to take me off of that thing. I was, I was hitting that like every fifteen minutes. Boy, mm-hmm. I was putting myself to sleep, bro. The pain, I just maybe it was my way of just this shit ain't real. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. blocking everything, but. Mm-hmm. This procedure, bro, they put me to sleep, and I woke up during the procedure. Mm. You ever seen that movie, Awake? I think I have. But where, where the guy's getting like open heart surgery, and like he could hear and he could hear everything. He's he's like looking at he's looking at his body, and then like yeah, his like, girlfriend, here, his yeah. girlfriend is the one that set him up or set yeah, something yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. That, bro. So I felt them cut me open and like what? back up. And the whole time I can't move. I can't move a finger. I can't open my eyes. Nothing, bro. What the? And you can you can feel this the whole time? I felt the whole thing, bro. My mind what was the? I was conscious. I was conscious, bro. Whoa. What are you like like what are you thinking at that moment? Like I was painful? I Imagine like being ah, like you're and you're yelling. What the? That's crazy. But I can't yell. I can't even yell. It's like in my mind, bro, and I'm just taking the pain. Like, that's that's kind of like when that's kind of like when you wake up. I forgot. I forgot the name of it. I think it's called like sleep paralysis. Whenever you're like yeah, sleeping like, and you wake uh, up and you can't move. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know what? I've I've had that happen one time. I feel like like I woke up and I couldn't move my whole entire body, and I got so scared that I just went back to sleep. Damn, but yeah, but at least you could wake up and like open, <sighs> bro. Imagine I couldn't even do that. My mind was awake, bro. That's crazy. And then, and so then, imagine that's crazy. And then I'm finally awake, awake from that, and now I can't talk because you know when you got the trach, I can't. You can't talk. Yeah, I can't even tell you what the heck I went through, bro. I had to write everything down. It's like, <sighs> and even like vent, you know, and tell you how what I just went. <sighs> Yeah. That's crazy. That's 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 crazy. And then um, I don't know when you got shot. Uh, did you have to do chest therapy? Well, yeah. I shot myself. You said chest therapy? Yeah, like they'll have to come and beat on your chest and then suction out your your, your through your trach. No, nah, they didn't do that. They did like a like oh man, yo. It, when I tell people, look through all the pain, every the worst thing that that I feel like I experienced in the hospital. Was them cleaning out that trait? That yeah. shit. Oh, yo, cleaning? Yeah, no, 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 not the cleaning it like how they used to come like pat around it. No, when uh, whenever like it got like kind of like clogged up and like they would ask you, "Is it hard for you to breathe?" And then they would come in and like like I feel like they like push it in and did, did like a little circle to like kind of like clean it out. Ooh. They ain't, they ain't had to do that for you. Oh my god! Uh, nah, oh. but it's not what they had to do though. Listen. Cause all right, so when got, it went through my scapula. I got hit okay. with by the way too. I ain't tell it. So I got hit with a hollow point. Yeah. The point of entry is this way. I have little mm-hmm. fragments, little small fragments. A big fragment right here. So it just exploded right when it hit your, your yeah. shoulder. Oh. Yeah. I have a fragment right here. Okay. Bar tissue right here. Oh damn. Has fragments come out here. So yo, it went through here and I have fragments come out here, bro. I'm so lucky it didn't hit no artery or no like, yeah. and then the the larger the larger fragment is um, lodged on my spinous process, and then a oh. small little little bitty fragment mm-hmm. is in 
spinal column. It's in the canal. Like it's a small little. But I'm an in, incomplete injury. Okay, so okay, so you can still move a little bit. No, I can't move anything, bro. You can't move anything. Can you feel anything? Yeah, a little patchy. Like, okay. weird, like feel anything? I don't know what that means, but can can you feel like can you feel like any type of sensation? Yeah, like like uh like hot water, cold water no, type. No, no hot water, cold water. I've rode four wheelers before, and I've had my foot on the freaking muffler, and I didn't even know it. Like. Nah, I don't feel any ho- cold, hot, cold. Um, I don't feel pinching. Okay. I don't really have much sensation, bro. I have more, a lot of nerve pain, a lot of nerve pain. Pins and needles, fucking 24 Ooh. hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I feel you. You have nerve pain? Uh, not really, not really. They would give it, nah, not really. I, I, like, the only pain I really deal with is just the pain on my back. Like, a, like, so, a, like, like mus- muscular pain? Yeah, 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 Eight, so- like that yeah uh so i like i do deal with pain but it's not i mean shit my back is hurting right now yeah my my back hurts too i deal with that kind of pain but i also like my side depends on bro i feel like i'm like you know when you're you know remember back in the day when your foot fell asleep yep you know what i'm saying and you wake up Mm -hmm. you just pins and i feel Mm -hmm. all day long bro okay damn damn so What's crazy is, you know, like, I you're the first person that I've spoke to, to to where you had a trach as well. So, yeah. all right, so so me, so so, yeah. so you know that experience, but that fucking experience is, yeah. Bro, but so into the suction, they didn't have to do your suction though, bro. So every two hours in the in the ICU after that trach installment, whatever. And since oh, and the reason I said so, it went through my scapula and mm-hmm. my right lung collapsed. My lung collapsed. Okay. And then in the in the ICU, it like the like, the lung started collapsing again because of the mucus mm-hmm. built up. Because you know, as you're sedentary and you're laying down, you start building up mucus in your lungs. Mm-hmm. So that's what they would have to do. They would have to come look, beat on my chest, beat on my back, and then mm-hmm. up through the trach, they will stick down the suction like a catheter. It's almost like the length of a catheter. Mm-hmm. And suck up all that, all the phlegm from my from my lungs, bro. So like they would have to come and do that every couple of hours, man. That was terrible. That was that was that was freaking the worst. Man, I'm t- I'm telling you, I I like because they had to take out my right lung. Mm. So so they had to do something similar, but I don't. It wasn't like a suction. They mm. like like it like it was they and, and they had to do it like every few hours because of the mucus buildup, like you said. Yeah, but, yeah, but but for me, like they just like 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 shoved something like it was like a tube and like they shoved it in there and like they did like that and like it like kind of cleared it out like it literally cleared it out. It wasn't like a suction though. No, it was it wasn't a suction. No, it wasn't it wasn't no. I, 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 yeah, yeah. So, I mean, maybe it was doing the same thing because they would it would clear it would definitely help the breathing. Yes, me, for sure. Yes, and then and then mine was always popping out too. Like oh. I don't know if your I don't know if yours ever popped out. Oh, from like, the vent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's from the vent sometimes. Yeah, man, that, man, my shit was always popping out, man. Like this shit was fucking horrible. It was this shit was horrible, man. So okay, so how long was the trach in until you uh until they took it out? Um, 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 like three weeks. Damn. So that means that you was on a feeding tube and you couldn't drink anything for three weeks. Not uh, yet. No, wait a minute. No, it was. It was because I had it, but the feeding. Because I, no, I'm thinking about it. They had to have the feeding tube in like your nose I or something. In my nose, but they yep. took that. They took that. But there was a point they took that out. Mm-hmm. There's a point they took the feeding tube out my nose, but I still had this though. Mm-hmm. I was already. Yeah. Tra- I was transferred over to because then then after they after they um oh because I had the little cap. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> After I started waning off of it, you know, then they just give you a little cap and then, you know, little by little mm-hmm. get off or whatever. I don't know how they did it for you. Nah, they just, they pulled mine out and then I just had a hole and then they said that the hole's going to close up. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. They ain't put no cap over it. No, no, but like I wore, for for some period, I just wore like a, this, it was just there. Like oh. the, the, and then it was mm-hmm. the, like a plug. Okay. But, to cover that, like, I, if I wanted to talk, I would cover the hole to talk or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, that's a, tube, that's bro. exactly how. Yep, you. Yeah, you, I you're didn't right. That's crazy. Feeding tube during none of any of that time because they okay. had that already. So I was eating something, bro. Okay, I would. Uh, yeah, they didn't. They didn't let me eat or drink anything. But but I did have the feeding tube. Remember them having? But they said that they didn't want me to catch pneumonia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, see, they the reason they let me start eating was because they wanted to make sure that there was no like the fragment didn't hit nothing anything here mm -hmm. and uh they made me do some x-ray once i passed that thing they took that off mm -hmm. and i remember pulling that feeding tube out of my nose yeah it was you know what the the feeding tube it felt a little nasty but not as nasty as when they was put not as nasty when they pulled the trach out yeah that, when they pulled the trach out that shit was nasty bro like it was i just it's a, they're pulling out a big tube out your yeah I remember damn i just wow uh, oh Okay, so, dude, dang, bringing okay. it. Back. Yeah, Bring man, it back. I I know because it's crazy because you know I don't talk to many people that actually had a trait. Yeah, so you like and mostly they, everybody has some type of feeding tube, but nobody really had a trait. And let me ask you, do you have like do you have your full voice like back after the trait? Yeah, mm -hmm. you do. Okay, yeah, because they say that some people they get a, their voices affected and they can't. Mm -hmm. But that's wild, bro. That that whole experience yeah. waking up though. I haven't met anyone that's gone through that yet. I was just catching the movies. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know that's crazy. Saying? Was um, I, I did one month in ICU and then another mm -hmm. month we have in like you okay. know occupational where they just teaching me mm -hmm. just you know how to put my socks on. Yeah. And you show bro how much stuff that we took for granted. You know a lot exactly. of exactly for granted, bro. Yes, the smallest it, things and like you don't stuff. realize it till it's gone, bro. When I had to like learn how to put my socks on. What yes. the hell? I'm trying to learn how to put my freaking socks on, you know? Putting just... the shoe, though. Putting the shoes on was hard. The shoe, yeah. Yes, putting the Look, shoes on. You know, just... I have a high, I have a high thoracic injury, so my balance is not the greatest. So okay, you know, what I'm saying yeah, a lot of stuff was really tough for me, man. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm five, I'm five eight. You know, what I'm saying I'm not, a, I'm not a tall. I know you were six, six ten. Six two. Nah, six two, six two. Six two. I, I, yeah, I'm like mm -hmm. five. Um and and before like around the time I got injured I was like one fifty, you know what okay. I'm saying, big dude, mm -hmm. um, you know so yeah another month in ICU I mean yeah another month in, in rehab, and I'll tell you the biggest thing that helped me you know mentally because mm -hmm. I go through our dark phases you know and our depression, and you know even till this day bro thirteen years later I still have my bad days you know like, I don't yeah. think something that I'll ever just be okay with and be mm -hmm. you know. Good days, bad days. It is what it is. Exactly. Um, but but and, and, but I think the biggest shift that I did was like a paradigm shift, right? And mm -hmm. I used to always be thinking about all the things I couldn't do anymore. Well, mm -hmm. I can't. Anymore, or I can't box anymore. I can't. Yeah. I can't. You know, I can't uh -huh, like how I want to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all these things. Nah, I feel and, you. and then it went to like you know just. It's like they say, looking at the glass half full or half empty. Mm -hmm. And then I just started looking at life like, okay, I could still do this. I could mm -hmm. still. Let me let me tell you this, bro. Because when I got out the hospital, you know, I didn't have transportation. Okay. I started doing the metro access in the beginning. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And and I did that. Um, but I I kept I threw myself back out there. I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing, right? I think the number one thing for the newly injured that's watching this channel. Mm -hmm. You gotta get past shame. Yes. You gotta get past feeling shame. Mm -hmm. Like people hermit up. They don't want to go out because maybe they feel embarrassed. And yeah. you do feel embarrassed. It's not that you, you do not, that first. You will. Yeah. We're going to encounter that shit. Yes. It's not gonna be a good feeling. But you know, you gotta get like past it. You gotta. And the only way to get past it is to push yourself out there and just get yeah. out there. Exactly. Yeah. And then I started having the attitude. Where like I didn't really give a damn what people thought, mm -hmm. or get people staring and stuff like that. Yeah. Those are just people that think that spinal cord injury that they're immune to that shit. Nobody. Yeah. Is immune to yep. Exactly. And nobody. nobody. Bro, I've met so many stories and like I was just drunk and I fainted and like damn, damn. you what now like damn like or a car accident or every day is like every day is a risky day. It could be is but we gotta yeah. count our blessings and be grateful. Yeah. So. I just laugh at those people, man. I bless bless their hearts. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Bless their hearts. They yeah. know what they don't know. 
You know what I'm saying? They don't know what they don't know. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, man. Um, yeah, bro. It's just been a hell of a journey, bro. This is just, yeah, it's been a learning experience. Um, so thinking about what I could still do has been a big shift. And then also, so after the shame, mm-hmm. if you could still have the ability of your, and use of your arms, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I know there's a lot of quads out there that still do it. Even, you know, whatever, whatever your mobility is, but if you could still be, be you have to try to be as independent as you can mm-hmm. and just do it. Try it yourself first. And if you can't do it, get help. That's yeah. my motto. You know exactly. Saying? And if you do it, then ask for the help. It's all right. But mm-hmm. my biggest thing is also driving, being mm-hmm. independent. So if you if yes. you have use of your man, just drive, bro. Mm-hmm. I know some people that's injured eight years, nine years, and nah, I don't drive yet. Like, well, why, why not, bro? You drove before, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you gotta drive, so that gave me a sense of independence again. Yeah, you know yeah, that was. I, have to... that, I felt like that was one of my biggest. That was one of the biggest things for me that helped me really gain back my independence was just being able to drive. Because I feel like I feel like my girlfriend, which is my wife right now, I feel like that it's just like just having her drive me everywhere. It just I don't know. It kind of made me feel less of a man. So once I really got my once I really got that back and I was able to drive around and you know like she asked me yeah, to bro. drive, it was like man, it just it just felt good, you know. It just it felt, it just felt easy. It does, it does, man, it does, it does. It, it, it truly feels incredible. So, so I had a I had a I had an interaction. So after I got out of the hospital, I started okay. going back to college again. Okay, you know, I go out there and get out there again. Like mm-hmm. I did the back that some like that. I got out in April. Mm-hmm. February, March, April. Yep, I got out of the hospital April, and then that's that fall semester I was in school. Okay, that's dope. I had an interaction, bro, with the girl. I had an interaction with this girl. So you know, you may relate. Like when you're out and about in the community, and you see someone else that's disabled, y'all. It's like yeah. a, it's a freaking community. It's like a brotherhood, y'all. You don't even know you signed up for, but like y'all recognize each other, whatever. So this girl, she was in the scooter. She was disabled. And she sees me around campus, mm-hmm. and. She comes and approaches me and she asks me, oh, yeah, so, yeah, why, why, who are you? Like, you know, why are you like? And I tell her and then she was like, you know, at least you know what it is to run, to walk, and to yeah. play. You know, I was born like this. Mm. And, and that really hit, that really, you know, that really, that broke me down right there in the hallway. I started crying because yeah. I was still, still fresh, mm-hmm. you know, so I just got released out the hospital. Yeah. So. That right there was a big shift for me too, and that helped me like just realize, you know, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been yeah, dead. exactly. You know exactly. You know, it's just it's a lot, bro. So exactly. You know, it's it sucks to say it, my man, but it's always somebody worse out there than you. And it's hey. just you just gotta be great. You just gotta be grateful for what you have, and that's one thing that I learned. You know, I might I might be paralyzed, but bro, there's some people that's dead out there. So it, you know, it's and. I just got to be grateful for, for for the fact that I'm able to wake up every single day. No matter how I wake up, I wake up, you know, and that's it. That's so, it. So then I got to I got to make the most of it. So that's why, you know, like, you know, a lot of people, they see where I'm at right now. And a lot of people really think that, you know, it happened overnight. It didn't. But yeah. like 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 they didn't see the the two years of me laying in the bed. They didn't see the me not wanting to leave the house. And, and it wasn't really that I didn't want to leave the house because of shame. Because you know when I left the house, like I wanted to get out. It's just I just I was just so depressed. I just didn't want to leave the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just you know like you know it you know like I just I don't know like relationships with my family. You know like I'm just glad that they really stuck by me. You know. They had my back, so that's why I tell people oh, a boy. strong, a strong, a strong support system really will help you get through this. Yeah, you, you know, instead of pushing people away, you really got to just gravitate towards the ones that are there, the ones that really sticking by you, the ones that really, you know, going through it with you. Because you know, yes, you are the one that's paralyzed, but they also going through something as well, and that's what you got to kind of understand is it's it's not it's not just you going through something. Everyone's you know? going. Bro, exactly. Okay. Everybody's feeling that. Right. at some some level, like yeah. your celebrity on TV is going through something. Like, exactly. We're all, we're all human at the end of the day. You feel yeah. me? Exactly. We got, we're all human. We got emotions. We feel things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, things happen, bro. So you know, just mm-hmm. 
It's about approaching life with an attitude of gratitude, is what I say. Okay. That's you know, what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so so I know you said that you got the thump yard going on right now, which is a which is like a boxing thing. Like, uh, like tell us about that. Yeah, so um, yeah, we we uh, so last year, um, April of last year, actually, okay. we, we came up with a way to engage the community to raise awareness on gun violence. Okay, and us coming from a boxing background, mm-hmm. and 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 that's one of our passions. We thought of a way to do it through mm-hmm. boxing. So, we host these backyard boxing events. Mm-hmm. Um, events gotten better, man. And we last summer we did twelve of twelve uh, events, and we've hosted like hundred and twenty fights. Okay. Um, got the attention of Channel Nine News here in the local community, the city That's council so. member, the police know about us. You know what I'm saying? We we mm-hmm. um, and then on our second event, we had a documentary crew come out. Well, they just happened to be out there, and they said, "Hey, we want to do a documentary on this whole movement." That's you know, dope. and that happened just organically, bro. Mm-hmm. So everything happened, like everything happened so quick and so organic. And just this past December, we released the uh, the uh, we premiered the documentary in a movie theater. Okay, and the council member out there, um, you know, like like I said, our Channel Nine piece came out, and they did like a whole four minutes on us. Um, mm, that's dope. What's the name of the documentary? Uh, it's called Thump Yard Champions of Circumstance. Okay. And it's I'm on YouTube. Check it out. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's like 56 okay. minutes long, bro. Okay. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. It's like a legit documentary. Them boys That's did their thing, man. Shout out to Grindstein and, and them. Mm-hmm. But they um they did their thing, man. And, and, it, and it was amazing to be a part of that and to have yeah. our whole journey uh, highlighted. And what it does, mm-hmm. too, it highlights the journey and the story of, of a few others, too, in the community. Okay. Um, okay. So the thump yard is it just is it just people in wheelchairs that participate, or is it everybody? No, it's open to everybody. I open to everybody. All, okay. All levels of experience. All, mm. uh, all, all male, female. Okay. Um, ever since, of course, your 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 yours truly did mm-hmm. they used to box, so it kind of got me back into boxing, man. So I do my little thing in the boxing ring. Okay. And we've had four matches of what's in here. Yeah, we've had four different matches, wheelchair matches. Okay. So we just we do dock in our chairs right next to each other and we do our thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Ooh, okay, okay. I bet that's, you know that's you, fun, bro. That's been fun, man. That's, that's really crazy. Fun. That's crazy. You know what, my man? I've been wanting to get in the ring. I've been wanting to get I've been wanting to do something, you know. You know, because hey. I love boxing. Boxing is a passion of mine, you know, but it's it sucks because I like I really didn't live in an area where it was a boxing gym around, you know what I mean. Oh. So it so it wasn't really that accessible to me. But you know, I've watched boxing my whole life. All I do is watch boxing now. Like I got I got the zone. I got uh top. I got the top rank. I got the ESPN app. PBC. Like uh, bro, watch, I, it's, watching all the fights. Bro, I'm watching all the fights. All all the, all, fight. all the so fights. Like I'm four, going like, to the fights. I fought. Let me see. I fought. From my man Ricky. I fought Kevin. I fought Troy. I got three. Yeah, I fought three different guys in chairs. Oh, for real? Okay. Okay. How you do you undefeated? Yeah, there's another dude out there that wants to get in there too. So I don't know, man. I'll get it in there with whoever. Whoever. Oh, damn. You undefeated? What's up? You know, you know, you know, I don't want to. Oh, okay. Boys that come through, man, they they give it their all, man. It's it's a tough I'm it's really hard, bro, to do it from a chair. Yeah. Especially with uh, from everyone that's been in there in a chair, I'm the highest injury. Okay. You know, I'm three. So I literally I got no core, bro, but I mm-hmm. kinda so I strap myself in, and then and then that's it. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Get it in. The other dudes have been T right. eight. You know what I'm saying? T eight, T eleven, and stuff like that. You know, them mm-hmm. boys moving, and I'm doing all this. Okay. Oh, what I can, bro. But catch the fights are on YouTube, man. You can watch them. I'm gonna check them out. I'm gonna check them out. I'm gonna check them out. Tell me how I did. You know. What I'm saying? I bet. I bet. They, you uh, know what? How, okay. Look. Controversial, controversial decision. You know what I'm saying? I Versus who? Versus who? Versus yeah, yeah. which one? I mean, you know, they. they which one's they, the most controversial hey, for you? My brother says, you know, you're the thump yard representative, bro. You're the face of the thump yard. You can't just be taking all the W's. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get okay. it. Back. So I'm like, all right, man. We give it okay. to him. Okay. 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 So you whooping up on? Right, dang, you whooping nah, up I, on everybody. Hey, they they catch me too, but it's it's always good work, bro. Yeah, man. that's good. It's been fun, man. It's been really fun. Um, a, a big thing has been able to just be able to to work with these people that 
participate. They all mm-hmm. come from different backgrounds, bro, and different yeah. stories. Okay. They sign up fight for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Some have they they they're going maybe through some mental health situations. And they want to mm-hmm. use the box as an outlet. So yeah. you know, in the pipeline, the bigger picture is to open up a boxing gym for the community, and then through there, I want to be able to also have like adaptive boxing mm-hmm. uh, for the wheelchair community as well. You know what I'm saying? Some adaptive boxing lessons. You know, we mm-hmm. could do some pad work or whatever, hit the mitts, um, you know, do a little sparring or whatever. There's a guy out mm-hmm. in uh, Canada that has a, a program. I seen that. I, actually, I, I, I think I actually follow him. I think his name is Leo. Leo. Mm-hmm. Leo. I don't know who it is, but it's called, it's called like, uh, I think it's called like adaptive boxing or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He got yeah. four times. He got shot. He, really, he got shot. He's oh. a gunshot. Well, okay. And, uh, yeah, and he came up, you know, he's doing his thing. But I, I want to do that too, man. It's great for the heart. You got, you know, us sitting down mm-hmm. and cheering, bro. It's easy to gain weight. You know what I'm saying? But being active, we got to keep our heart pumping. Yeah. You know, that's that's just my way, bro. I tried mm-hmm. wheelchair basketball, though. I will say that. I tried wheelchair basketball for, like, the first year after I got out the hospital. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I was never a baller, bro. I mean, mm-hmm. it, I've done a little balling here and there, but it's not yeah. like it. Boxing is my thing, so yeah. uh, it's not the same doing it from a chair, but just the fact that I could still be involved mm-hmm. and you know um, the thump okay. yard move has been it's been wonderful, man. So I'm excited okay. for the next. Event. Do you get do you get people from all over the country that come? Nah, we've been local, bro. We've been okay. You know, been local thing. Well, we we had a guy from New York come. I'll say that he okay. he's come out to like several events. Like okay. he'll drive to New York and get a little match. That's you know, dope. That's dope. Got, okay, so how does somebody go about getting a match? Uh, they just go to the website, thethumpyard.com, and okay. get all right there. Boom, the link, and sign up as a boxer. Okay, is it a weight class? Uh, Yeah, so I match it by 10 pounds, just 10 pound difference. Mm-hmm. We use here, and we use 14 ounce gloves. It's okay. three two minute rounds. Three two minute rounds? Okay. And we do stand and eight counts. So, you know, okay. I. You know, so, at the end of the day, I say we thump for a cause. That's like the slogan, we thump mm-hmm. for a cause. Because every person that signs up got their own reason for signing up. Yeah. This is volunteer-based. No one's getting paid, but they're doing it for a cause. We're doing it to bring the community together. And the, the mm-hmm. format is we have guest speakers. So we I want to introduce financial literacy because I believe also, aside from sport, you know, boxing is a great way to build character and, you know, mm-hmm. guns, put up the gloves or whatever. But yeah. aside from that, I think another big component is financial literacy. So we want to bring guest speakers to introduce different topics to the community. Um, Mm -hmm. We got a prayer, you know what I'm saying, that blesses the the event. You know, um, that's dope. So we got food vendors, we got a DJ. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we we make it like a a, a, like a little community uh, get together, man. Okay, when's the next event? Uh, April 16th. April 16th. 16th? And yeah, you can catch it live. We'll put the fight side. We usually do like ten to fifteen fights. Okay, that's dope. And Where do you go live at? Do you go live on YouTube? You go live on Facebook, Instagram? Oh, uh, we yeah, Instagram, Instagram. We go live. Okay. On, yeah, catch me on Instagram. Okay, all right. Then I'm gonna have to check it out. I'm gonna have to check it out. So you said April 16th, Thump Yard going live. We going okay. live. April okay. 16th, Instagram, catch it, catch it, and then after, okay. load all the fights on YouTube. Okay, okay. That's, you know what? That's what's up. That's what's up. For real, for real. I watched that though. I'm gonna send you the link after this. Yeah, definitely, definitely send me that link. I also put that link down there in the description box below with the link to your Instagram as well, so everybody can check it out. April 16th, the Thump Yard. They're going live. They got this crazy boxing event. Okay, look, hey, look, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Oh, like you know, like I said, one of the man, we touched on this a little bit about how how the been like a blessing and a conduit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the fact that I can continue to pursue the real estate and still have yeah. been able to do it from a wheelchair, mm-hmm. whole another story of like how the heck I do that, right? Yeah. Hey, I've closed like a little bit over two hundred deals. I've been a part of over two hundred transactions, mm. um, wholesale properties. I'm okay. also a real estate agent in DC and Maryland. Um, I fixed and flipped properties with my brother J and R Homes. Is that's company. crazy? That's so dope. that's that's how I make that's my bread and butter for real. The dump yard just. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, you know, eventually it'll be its nonprofit. Eventually it'll, we'll have our gym. But my yeah. bread real estate, but my goal through the Thump Yard and through that audience is to demystify real estate investing and wholesaling mm-hmm. in community, like the basic common man. 
Mm-hmm. And one, how to flip a house, bro. Because I it's yeah. literally changed my life. Like I've done transactions where I've been dead broke, like dead broke, zero dollars overdraft mm-hmm. in my bank account, and I negotiate and close a deal, and we make forty five k. Like yeah. that's zero dollars out of pocket, no cash or credit. That's and great. That's dope. That's, oh, but be able to, like so. So I say that to say like the wheelchair has been kind of a an aid to now allow me to. I've been able to speak on stages to share my story. And, you know, it's, it's been, it's just been a blessing, bro. You know, cause people, li- they like to hear, you know, people like to hear a, uh, uh, like a comeback story. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, back story. Everybody loves a good comeback story. Yeah. Man. So I just, you know, this, this, that's what keeps me going and, and mm-hmm. be able to give that education to, to the community and see how it could change their lives, man. It's been a blessing too. That's dope. That's dope. So, you got the thump yard going on. You got the the real estate going on. Do you got anything else going on? Just being a father, bro. Being a father. Being a, okay. That's okay. A, my job, man. It's been okay. That's okay, been so, so that's you come, got a little two year old. So fatherhood, man, it's been a blessing. Fatherhood has just come with a, a, a different host of challenges, and that's mm-hmm. that's a whole other little story in its own, man. Um, son is my biggest blessing, mm-hmm. and I'll call him. I mean, he's God's cre- God's creation, right? But he was like a little science project too. <laughs> okay. He's my little you know, through the spinal cord injury thing. I had to figure out that whole situation and how mm-hmm. to make that happen and work. And how'd you? Um, what was the process that actually helped you get like a? I would say like uh, what process did you go through? All right. So first, the first thing I did, I, I remember speaking to the doctor, my my uh, my doctor in therapy. Okay. And I told him I was like, yeah, I want to, you know, explore having kids, because mm-hmm. he asked, he 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 was he had told me he, he helped he had a great urologist that could help. Mm-hmm. So I had one appointment with the urologist, and then the urologist introduced me to a penile vibrator stimulator or stimulation. Oh yeah, okay, I know what you mean. You know what I'm talking? Have you, ever, you did yeah. you try that? That's like the blue one, the blue one where and like the, the little. Hair. Yep, uh uh-huh, yep, yeah. Verticade. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. Yep. Yeah. Dollars, bro. That joint broke on me. <laughs> what? They gave me that for, I got that through the VA, it just sent it to me, but it didn't work. Oh, really? It didn't yeah. work? No, nah, it didn't work. So I tried that and I you know, she's like, Here, try this. She left the room and I tried that joint. That joint worked, bro. Cause and that worked and I tried this after this was like eight years after my injury. Okay. So I haven't cleaned the pipes in eight years, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro, so when that worked, um, I had the biggest AD attack. Like I had a freaking headache, mm-hmm. you know, autonomic dysreflexion. Yeah. Yeah. Are you prone to that as well? You said what? AD, are you prone to um, autonomic dysreflexia? No, uh-uh. No? Okay, so mm-hmm. I, I am. I got a high injury. So that joint gave me a freaking headache. But anyway, it worked. She came. She checked it. Oh, you got sperm and... That was it, bro. She wanted to go through this whole process of like um freezing it and you know, whatever, whatever. But I didn't I didn't do any of that, bro. I literally mm-hmm. like going through the whole insemination to mm-hmm. a doctor. So I just did it at home. I did an in-home insemination. Turkey baster. Uh yeah, yeah. That's all I did, baby. Okay. You know, use the calendar, ovulation date, and this and that. Um, but they have actually so, so check this out. They actually have a a, a special joint. So it's, it's basically a big ass syringe, but it's called yeah. the inseminator. Okay. The and so I use the Furticare, further further Furticare, right? Mm-hmm. Fur, yep. Furticare, yeah, Furticare. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, Furticare. Then that one broke on me, and then I I bought Vibirect. Okay. Vibirect X3, and then I use that with the inseminator. And now I have a son. Congratulations, my man. You know, so thank you, bro. So it took a little ingenuity, you know what I'm saying? A little mm-hmm. bit of re- some patience and a little yeah. bit of faith. A whole lot of faith, bro. <laughs> and and yeah, I mean, and you know, of course, you know, all the thoughts of like, how the heck am I going to be a dad in a wheelchair? Yeah. You know, like, what if he runs, like, how is it going to be to pick him up? Because I don't yeah. have, the, like I said, I don't have the greatest balance yeah. in court. Mm-hmm. But my son's about to be two years old next week. Okay. And it's been fun, bro. It's been fun. I've, okay. you know, 
you know, know what? I, you know what? I would love to get you back on the channel to talk more about that because I feel like I feel like that'd be a topic to where you know a lot of men in wheelchairs need to hear. You know, a lot of us, including me, you know, we're curious about having having children while still being in a wheelchair. You know, like yeah, we I do get those thoughts. You know, what if our son runs out in front of the 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 car you know just just all types of thoughts you know and i would love to get you back on the channel yeah to really talk about that in a video in itself because i feel like that needs to be a video in itself like honestly because it's a lot of people need to hear that and a lot of people might not you know follow all the way through this whole podcast and i feel like that just having a video directly on that would actually do you know really good out there for you know those out there who are just you know curious to be honest with you yeah definitely bro Mm -hmm. Definitely. But yeah, you know, I feel like, you know, wheelchair users yeah. are for problem solvers, you know, like we always mm-hmm. solving a problem. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. When I go, I, I, when I go somewhere, the first, the first place I'm identifying is the bathroom and the exit. You know what I'm yep. saying? Exactly. Right? Bathroom is and where the exit is. I got, yeah. I feel like, cause I get little bladder spasms and I know I got a calf. Mm-hmm. I, I get the little sensation. So I don't have a lot of time from that to when I'm yep. freaking so it's like I gotta go. So yeah, it's a lot, man. But it's it's every day's learning experience, and every day's yeah. new. Oh, you feel me? Exactly. You know what? No day is the same. No yeah. day is the same. Every day, every day is a new journey. You know, and that's why I call the podcast the New Journey Podcast because I feel like that. You know, this life in a wheelchair is it's a complete you know three sixty from the life that we had before. You know, yeah, yes, we can do a lot of the same things, but everything's just going to be a little bit different, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's truly a new journey, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and it's it's crazy. It's crazy to see, you know, to listen and hear what you was doing before your injury and to see you pick back on the re- pick back up on the real estate, you know, yeah. and the boxing as well. You know, it's it's really, truly amazing. But that goes to show you that, you know, your life isn't over after a spinal cord injury. It's not. Look. It's only over when you decide. Like when exactly. you decide, hey, I'm not moving forward. Like, but life mm-hmm. continues. We keep going. Exactly, exactly. And this is really, truly, you know, this is a comeback story. Exactly, you know, j- just like you said, it's it's truly a comeback story, and and people need to hear this, all right? Because it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of spinal cord injury patients out there that you know they're sitting at home right now, day in the bed. They just you know, and they just got the mindset that. I can't do anything. I can't have sex. I can't drive. I can't. I can't become a real estate Bro, agent. I can't box. The first thing I bought when I came out, came out the hospital. Mm-hmm. You, are you hip to the intimate rider? Yeah, I got one. That was that was the first that was the first thing on my list, bro. When I came out, ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Look, out, so man. for those you, so, so for those of you who don't know what the intimate rider is, I'll link it down there in the yeah. description box below. You go uh, check hey, it out. So you, you, you below, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I got one, but I should have bought. I should have bought the little cot that go with it because my girl a little short. Oh so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, bought, I bought the whole kit, the whole the, the whole edge and all that. The wedge come with a little suede on it. And- oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. I ain't use mine in a minute. I need to pull mine back out. There's just so many, you know, like like just this just goes to say life goes on. Like yeah. being in a spinal cord injury doesn't mean you got to stop doing the things. We just got to do it differently. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. It's not impossible. Everything is possible. It's just from a mm-hmm. different approach, and that's how I approach business and mm-hmm. real estate. How old? How I'm good? I could have stopped. I could have like decided not to keep going in that career, because oh, how I'm gonna sell houses from a chair? How I'm gonna mm-hmm. go and sell houses and the yeah. stairs? There's a hundred and one excuses. Yeah. How's like I even had these thoughts like, how's a seller gonna take me serious when I go to the appointment and they see me in a wheelchair? Are they gonna mm-hmm. sign? And you know what? It's been more of a, it's it's been more of a help than anything, because now they're like, "Wow, look at you!" You're like, they admire. Like people like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like we yeah. tell all these lies to ourselves, but in reality, because people are going through their own stuff. Yeah, so everybody's going through something. Forward to see us keep going. It helps. It helps. You know, yeah. and life is about helping your your brother and sister, man. Mm-hmm. It's all about helping each other out. That's how we're going to make this world a better place. You feel me? Exactly. Exactly, my man. You know? Exactly. And look, my man, look, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, sharing your story. I, I look, I definitely look forward to getting you back on here, you know, so we could talk about some things because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people in wheelchairs that, 
they want to become real estate agents. They want to get into the real estate space. You yep. know, it's a booming market right now. It's crazy. All the properties going up in value. My house went up crazy in value. So it's a lot of people in wheelchairs that that want to know. My wife is actually about to take the test for her her real estate license. There so you go. Man, it's so many people getting into real estate, I, and bro. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people that you know that are in wheelchairs that are really just curious and you know if we could get you back on here to really share some more stuff on that i'm pretty sure that'll do a lot of good for people out there because it's a lot of wheelchair users that just feel like man i will not be able to sell a house you want to know why because i was that person i felt like you know what if i get to a house and they got stairs i'm gonna have to have my wife go up in there you know maybe she might not assess the house the way i would or you know like just like little things like that you mm -hmm. know so I feel like getting you back on here would definitely do some justice. And look, 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 we need to give it. We need to get you back on here to talk about the thump yard, the, the real estate, all that, my man. So if you could, please come back on here. And like I said, thank you for allowing me to bring your channel. I mean, to bring your story, you know, to the people out there, my man, because it's truly thank a comeback story. No, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the platform and mm -hmm. keep thing, man. You got a you got a new subscriber here with me. Thank and you. Thank you. I'm going to keep sharing this podcast, bro, because, you know, what you do as well, man, everyone needs to hear it. Yeah. You know, giving your perspective, everyone has their own story to tell, man. And exactly. You're here for a reason, bro. You know, thank you. Thank we're, you. We're all, we're all angels. Like, we all, we're all here mm -hmm. for messengers, bro. We yeah. got to just message, find our purpose yeah. and just keep rocking. Exactly, my man. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. And I definitely look forward to, you know, chatting again. All right, brother. All right, my man.